Dr. Christy Corp Minamiji. Today we're going to talk to you about preparing your horse for a trip. The most important thing to remember about preparing your horse for a trailering is to be prepared for the trip. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that your truck and trailer are properly matched. You want to make sure that your truck can both pull and stop the weight of your trailer with the horses. And you want to make sure that your tires are inflated to the correct pressure. It's essential to make sure that your truck and trailer are properly hitched. There are two types of trailer hitches. You've got your bumper pull or you have a gooseneck. You want to make sure that your safety cables are attached. You want to make sure that your lights are properly connected and working. Test everything before you go. Nobody wants to think about a breakdown, but it's important that you have the proper emergency equipment on hand in case you do break down. Have a jack, you have a properly inflated spare tire, have all of your fluid levels checked and topped off, and that your truck is in proper working order before you begin the trip. If you have access to feeders, if your horse is going to be able to eat during the trip, this is a nice configuration with the head down. We've got the bumper bar here in front so that the horse can't put parts of its body other than its nose into the feeder. If the horse is going to be tied, you want to make sure that you have clips with a breakaway snap so you can release the horse very quickly in the case of an emergency. Having an escape door here isn't essential, but it's always nice. You want to make sure that wall, ceiling, and floor are all intact, smooth. You don't have any sharp edges, holes, or gaps. It's important to remember that a trailer is essentially a big metal box. You want to make sure that it has proper ventilation, that your horse remains cool and comfortable in the summer, dry enough and warm enough in the winter. This trailer is excellent. It has windows at the back and front that can be opened. They're screened. They no rocks can f or debris can fly in from the outside of the road. They also have bars so the horses can't stick their head out and sustain an injury that way. Yeah. Another nice feature about this trailer is that it does have fans for additional cooling and ventilation. There are also vents in the ceiling. Before you even contemplate loading a horse and taking it anywhere, you want to practice driving with the truck and trailer. Make sure that you know how to gauge your stops and turns and that you can drive the truck hauling the trailer safely. Long before you plan any sort of a trip, make sure that your horse is properly trained to both load and ride safely in the trailer. You want to start out slow under calm, quiet circumstances, preferably with a handler who's very experienced in loading horses. You want to make it as pleasant an experience as possible for the horse, especially if you have a young horse. The time to train a horse to load is not when you have to get them in the trailer because you need to get to the vets. You also want to make sure to get them used to hauling a little ways. Take them somewhere pleasant. Don't make the first trip to the vet where they get poked with needles at the end of the ride. That's not fair. Sometimes if you're hauling a young horse, it's helpful to take an older, more bomb-proof buddy along for the ride. Horses are herd animals and they feel more secure with company. Another thing to remember when trailering is that different trailers have different configurations. If you have a horse who's only ever loaded and unloaded in a step-up trailer and you're suddenly trying to take him somewhere in a ramp, it's good to plan for some time to get the horse used to that. When you close the trailer, you want to make sure that all of the latches are properly secured. Again, making sure that the ramp is secure, that nothing is going to come apart while you're driving down the road. Like with everything else, there are some pros and cons to wrapping a horse's legs for a trip. The wrap can help keep them from getting nicked or scraped or banged in the trailer. However, if you're going to be trailering for long distances and maybe your horse is going with a commercial hauler with someone who might not stop as frequently to check the legs as you, you may want to leave the legs unwrapped in case the horse rubs his legs together, loosens the wrap, and you have a wrap that's unwinding or twisting on the leg, potentially causing injury. If you're going to be crossing the state lines with your horse, you're going to need to have some blood testing done and you need a veterinarian to do what's called a health certificate exam. The paperwork they're filling out is called a Certificate of Veterinary Inspection or a CVI. For most states, the main blood test that you're going to need is called a Coggins test. It's a blood test for a disease known as equine infectious anemia. Each state can set their own requirements for entry into that state though, so it's very important that you let your veterinarian know where you're going when you make the appointment so that they can check and see if there's any additional testing or other requirements for that state. For thehorse.com, I'm Dr. Christy Corp Minamiji. For more information about traveling with your horse, please talk with your veterinarian or check out thehorse.com.